Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss five questions in about 10 minutes, and we are always excited to have our audience here. And today we have two special guests. This is Adam and Annie Davis. They are of Salt Lake City Table Tennis, and right here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm very excited to have both of them on. And I probably should point out that some of you may recognize Annie. She was a guest on our podcast just a few weeks ago. And uh, so it's good to have you back, Annie. And this time she brought her wonderful husband to talk about the business that they own together. So thank you so much to both of you for joining us today. I'm excited to talk to you about a, a passion of mine, which is table tennis or ping pong, as some people call it. But uh, what would you like the audience to know about Salt Lake City table tennis? Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, Salt Lake City table tennis is a full-time club for people that want to play table tennis or ping pong. Um, we have six tables. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, members get a key card. They can come. They swipe the card. They can come in. So if they want to play at three in the morning, they're welcome to. Uh, typically, there's people there every evening uh, on the weekdays. So you don't even have to have someone to play with. You can just show up and you can challenge a table and play whoever's there. Um, their skill level from beginner to near, um, near professional, uh, there's ages from five to 80. So everybody's welcome, any skill level, any, any age. And that's awesome. just have some fun. Oh, that sounds great. It's, uh, it's been a long time since I've played any kind of competitive, not, not formal competitive table tennis, but at least competitive skill level wise, but uh, I definitely need to make the drive and come check it out. So we'll do that. You'll find it there. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you again so much. We are very excited to talk a little bit more about some, some leadership type questions. So let's just jump right into those. The first question, if you would please share an example of collaboration within a team that you folks have had. Okay. Yeah. We, we have several coaches. Um, they're, they're contracted. So there's a lot of freedom, um, a lot of, uh, they, they do all their own scheduling, all, all of that. So, so it can be a very difficult um, process to, to keep track of everyone, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to. And um, so we, we have to get kind of creative in finding ways to make sure that it's running smoothly. Um, when we moved buildings, that was a really good example of them, everyone kind of pulling together as a team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, we last year, or I guess this year, yeah, beginning of this year, um, we had to move buildings and it was very short notice. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had to find a building, move everything. Um, and luckily, the table tennis community is pretty, pretty close. So all the members came and helped and the coaches helped and everybody pitched in. Um, so it was able to happen. Um, and then, you know, just coordinating all of the, all of that to happen, you know, it took a lot of, a lot of work. A lot of collaboration, yeah. for sure. Awesome. That's a great example. And it's a different perspective than, uh, than some folks, some folks may be thinking about. So I really like that. Question number two, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to measure engagement. Tell us your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so again, with the coaches being contracted and stuff, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, to see what they're doing and um, keep them engaged and whatnot. So uh, we've gotten creative. We've uh, set up dinners where you know we all meet and have dinner so that we can go over everything because um then gives them a reason to be there when they're not being paid to to be there um mm. so yeah i think it just takes a lot of communication um making sure that uh, you keep keep that flow going back and forth so that everybody is heard and you're hearing everybody and I think too, yeah. And to expand on that, I think finding the communication style that works with the business is huge. Um, like I work more typically like with my other job in more of a corporate setting, the table tennis club is so different. We both had to kind of learn that, that like we can't just send out an email that says like per the 
per the agreement or contract because people are like, whoa, what? It's it's literally like a family. And so we've had to kind of change our communication approach so it's more family based. That's an excellent point that you have to kind of find what your what the culture is of either the company or the industry, perhaps, in order to determine the best way to communicate with it. That's I think that's a great response. Well, question number three, based on your experience, and I'll let either one of you or both of you answer this question if you'd like. I'll leave it up to you folks. What is one quality of a confident leader? Um, I think when I was not being the leader, so that uh, I was doing the following, mm -hmm. uh, what I saw was most effective to have me lead or follow, I guess, sorry, mm -hmm. um, yeah. was someone that I respected. Um, I feel like if you respect them and like them, you're more willing to put in the effort to make things work. Um, when I've been under someone that did it by fear or whatever, you know, get this done or you're gonna get fired or, you know, you, you just do the bare minimum just to get by because you, you don't, you don't want to give more than, than, uh, yeah. than you have to, to someone that is you're, you don't like, you don't feel respected yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. It's a minimal effort at that point. Yeah. If you don't respect them. Yeah. So, so the, the more you like someone, the more respect they give to you and the more you're going to respect them. So yeah, I think uh, respect was really big. And That's I wrote great. a ton about that from him because I am by nature a doormat. And so I'll hear him on the phone and I'm like, that sounded really harsh. Was that a bad call? And he's like, no, like, like he's negotiating on Craigslist or something. And I'm like, oh man, what if their feelings are hurt? And he's like, Annie, like it was just business. So I think it's really good to see that because he naturally just, people just respect him more probably because he doesn't like mess around like I do. But anyway, it's been good. I've learned a lot from him. I think um, what he said is spot on with uh, just people wanting to do their best comes by them respecting you and wanting to really have a good relationship with you. I like that. That's a great response. Question number uh, four we're up to, right? Yeah. Question number four. Um, is there someone that you would like to recognize that has made an impact in your life? And Adam, we'll start with you. And I, Annie, you had the opportunity to answer the question in the previous podcast, but Adam, what would be your thoughts to that? Um, yeah, she's sitting here, right, right here. Um, I didn't make him say this. <laughs> encouraged it. <laughs> I encouraged it, but I didn't make him say this. <laughs> but, but it's true. Um, my life is completely different since meeting her. Um, you know, I was working nine to five for basically minimum wage. Um, content just, you know, not doing much. Um, so she's put up some ambition in my step, uh, got me out there doing stuff and making my life better. I like that. And you'd be surprised. I, I asked that same question of all my guests, at least in season two, that's been the question at this uh, stage. And a lot of the guests refer to some family member, maybe a spouse, maybe a parent, a sibling, aunt, uncle, whatever it may be. But I love the answer. So thank you for recognizing and supporting each other. I think that's a great, uh, great right, marriage. Yeah. Answer, but I totally uh, would have. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, yeah. Our last question, Adam, tell us a little bit about your first job. Uh, first job. Um, the first job that really meant anything to me was working with people with disabilities. Mm. Um, I, I did it for a long time. Um, and I, I think it's something everybody should do. Um, you learn so much from, from helping people that need help. Like they can't do things themselves. Um, and you going out and, and helping them, like for the most part, it was the easiest job. Um, we just, you're, you're getting paid to go play with these people basically, take them movies and lagoon and all these things. Um, but just the impact that you have in their life is a lot of, you know, a lot of them don't have a lot of family that come visit or none. Um, so you're basically their family and it's a really, it was, it was really good experience. Um, and I'm, I'm so, i it changed my life and made me a better person for being able to see what they've gone through and 
continue. Some of them have the hardest life and they have a smile every day. So it doesn't matter how, how hard my life is, I can look back at some of these people and be like, wow, they did this and they're happy and they're moving on and like I can as well. That's a great response. And thank you for sharing that. It's, it does sound like it was very meaningful. And as you said, life-changing. And uh, I support your encouragement for people to take opportunities to serve, whether it's volunteer work or whether it's for a paid position, either way, what, what a great opportunity to learn about yourself as well as the people that you, that you serve in that capacity. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for doing that. Well, thank you both so much for being on the podcast today. How can people find you or how can they learn more about Salt Lake City Table Tennis? Uh, the easiest way is probably just look us up on the internet. SLCTT.com is our website, um, or you can just Google Table Tennis, and you're literally the first one. Um, we're located in South Salt Lake, right off of the 33rd uh, freeway exit, I-15. Um, and go ahead. Yeah, Facebook, you can find us there and Instagram. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being on. Thank you for having us. You are very welcome. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. Once again, teamengagementpodcast.com. And we also encourage you to subscribe to the podcast, either the audio version or to the video on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day.